I left Porto Torres just before 8 a.m. First, took the SS-131 two-lane road, then in the Cesare area, looked for something less frequented, so turned into one of the local roads. I was driving trying to navigate to the Azimuth rather than listening to the recommendations of the navigation, which obviously wanted to guide me along the main roads. Following the back roads, somewhere between Usini and Tisi, started looking for a place for a coffee. I ate breakfast and had coffee on the ferry, but it was the most expensive and smallest coffee in the world. While brewing, I glanced at the area with a digital eye of my robotic bird. As you can see, I was greeted by quite cloudy weather, which always makes everything seem flat, boring and dull. So my feelings were mixed. Typical landscape views with villages set in undulating terrain. On the slopes, vineyards alternate with olive grooves and buildings picturesquely squeezed between green hills. after a short break, I moved on. The plan for this day was to reach Capo Caccia Alghero, where the first Via Ferrata is located, which I found in the Ferrata Guide application. It's called Via Ferrata del Cabiro. I was going to spend the night there and make the first iron road in the morning. Driving southwest, I saw a lake in the distance and a gravel road leading towards it. But it soon turned out that it led to a private properties, so I had to turn back. Sticking to the asphalt road and then gravel again, after a few more minutes I found myself on the lake's shore. This stop was made to satisfy my curiosity. My navigation showed me a road through this lake. And indeed, the road was there, but looking at it closely, I was not sure if it was really possible. My car is adapted for wading. All vents and air intake are led out into the roof level, but of course, water resistant of the defender's doors would probably be a problem if it turned out that this road does not disappear just below the surface of the water. Unfortunately, it was hard to deduce anything from this level, so I started to wonder if I should try it or not. As you can see, there was a long way to go. Apart from the water level, the unknown was also what was below its surface. The desire to check organoleptically was against common sense, because I don't have to drive around for unknown numbers of kilometers to bypass this obstacle. So why risk it? Okay, maybe just a bit. Well, no. There was too much against this game. Despite the flat surface, the road continued to cut deeper into the lake, the water was starting to reach the door, so in a moment I would have it inside. Do I really need drying in any other unpleasantness? If for some reason I got stuck, there would be no chance of a quick rescue, so sticking to the principle that I avoid unnecessary risk on lonely expeditions, I decided to withdraw. After these tiring experiences, it was obligatory to refill lost calories. So I prepared a quick meal and continued my trip. Lago del Tuga is an artificial reservoir created by the construction of a dam in 1975 to irrigate the Nura Plain. It has an area of just over 3 square kilometers. 
I think it is worth staying longer if you are looking for a place for fishing or longer walks. The water is probably not suitable for drinking and bathing, but it was a very quiet spot with many places for a shorter or longer picnic. As it was early afternoon, this time without any stops, I went towards Capo Caccia, which hides the Ferrata del Cabiro. This time I was driving along the main road, so after about an hour, I found myself at the Belvedere Foradada viewpoint. The site is located in the northwest of the island in the Ponto Conte Natural Park. The peninsula itself is quite large, and the first thing that immediately catches the eye are the 110 meters high cliffs on the west side, from which there is a breathtaking view of the winding road below, nearby towns, and most importantly, the blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea. And now, there should be some beautiful shots from the Via Ferrata crossing, but it turned out that I didn't do my homework too well and I didn't check anywhere else if this Ferrata was open. There was not a word in the Ferrata guide application that it had been temporarily closed by the municipality of Alghero, allegedly to check its security, and it would remain closed until at least 2023. It is quite interesting that only one man is responsible for the Ferrata del Capiro, Corrado Conca. At first he wanted to secure the climbing routes in this place, then he installed a few ropes permanently, and so the idea of an iron road was born. He financed it himself and a few friends helped him to build it. Do not think, however, that my walk along the cliffs did not give me any impressions. First of all, it was good to finally stretch the bones and get tired a little on a small climb. Secondly, the views on the west and north sides were really beautiful. Going closer to the edge we have an uninterrupted view of the islet of Foradada. If you do not feel confident with such exposures, I recommend that you stay a little farther from the cliff. Generally a good idea for safety reasons. Because such views can really make you dizzy. I like the adrenaline thrill in such places, so the walk gave me a great pleasure. And I was dizzy by a rather unexpected spectacle which created the setting sun that finally managed to break through the clouds. Don't take me to church I wanna be buried at sea Don't take me to church God never done nothing for me Was never one to truly believe Don't take me to church I wanna be buried at I wanna be buried at sea
take me to church I wanna be buried at sea Next day, I headed south, sticking to the coast. This time, I decided to take a ride along the coastal boulevards of Alghero, also known as Little Barcelona. All because of the Catalan domination in the mid-14th century, when the Spaniards, in defense of the city against the indigenous people who were displaced deeper into the country, built walls, fortifications, towers, and embankments. All this reflected in the local style, an unusual network of streets, architecture reminiscence of Catalan cities, as well as the dialect. Reportedly, 60% of the inhabitants, and the city has about 40,000, still understands the Catalan language. The road runs along the remains of the defensive walls. They are called bastions and are named after famous explorers. From time to time you can encounter a tower or cannons used to defend the city. Alguero was quite empty at this time of year, so driving through the city center was easy. Watching it through the windows of the car, I thought that one day I must come back here and wander into those narrow streets of the old town. The place probably has a completely different charm when all those pubs along the boulevards are open. Unfortunately, now mostly closed off-season. The departure from the city to the south promised spectacular views. The coast road SP105 from Algaro to Bossa meanders with countless serpentines just above the azure waters of the Mediterranean Sea. On its other side, there are high slopes running along the coast, the peaks of which can reach up to 600 meters. After a dozen or so kilometers, I encountered a source of drinking water, and I decided to fill all the water tanks I had. First, a 20 liters military bag, which serves as a water for quick rings in my hand, washing myself in the morning and taking water from it for a quick coffee during short stops. Next, with the help of a hose and a pump, I fill the 60 liters tank located in the left wheel arch, serving as a water tank for washing in the sink in the car. And finally, 20 liters tank for drinking water. Filled with water, we continued towards Bossa, slowly concentrating on looking for a place to stay. Twilight in these latitudes in winter is falling quickly, so I was trying to find something before it got dark. Unfortunately, in this area the road was climbing more and more and I could forget about easy access to the sea. So I continued hoping that I would have time to find some nice spot with access to the shore before the dark. And of course, as usual, failed to do it. Fortunately, the location found in the dark turned out to be fine, despite not the easiest access. But more on that and the journey in the next episode. <laughs>